I'd like to jump into a little bit more about some data areas that we've announced here recently and really the benefits that it's going to bring and expand use cases that developers can interact with the Snowflake environment. This is, is kind of a quote, and, and we're hearing this time and time again from our customers, but we now have the ability to do the art of the possible. It's opened up. It's no longer infrastructure that's to constraint. It's more of the imagination of an organization. Because now we're making programming and using of data much easier, much more flexible, and, and in an in a environment that security officers and, and governance is, is front and center all of the time, uh, allowing organizations to have the confidence to move these additional workloads to Snowflake. Most of the time I'm gonna be talking about Snowpark and our Java functionalities, but I will be talking a little bit about unstructured data, SQL APIs, and a new program we've started called Powered by Snowflake, which allows organizations to take advantage of building applications and knowing they're gonna have Snowflake support. So as I start, one of our biggest announcements that we made at our summit in June was Snowpark. And Snowpark, it now allows developers to work in the tool of their choice and the notebook of their choice inside of Java and Scala and later in the year, Python. And what Snowpark, Snowpark allows users to do is essentially develop in their notebook and have all of that logic pushed down and operated and performed inside of the Snowflake platform. Previous to Snowpark, a lot of this work to develop in these languages had to be extracted out of, out of Snowflake and then pushed back in to fully utilize. With the advancement and now the announcement of Snowpark being uh, publicly available as of two or three weeks ago, we now have the ability to open up the abilities of our platform to developers outside of just SQL or having and requiring them to pull data out of the Snowflake environment. And we do this by taking that um, functional languages and loading libraries, which allow it to convert into SQL. And here's an example of a simple data frame that's, that's generated. And what Snowpark does is create the equivalent SQL to that statement and execute and push that work down into Snowflake. So now the ability to process millions or even billions and trillions of rows inside of a notebook can be done without that data actually being retrieved and brought back into the environment, allowing the power of Snowflake, allowing the governance of Snowflake, allowing the security of Snowflake to really manage all of that workload and, and all of the other requirements around managing data of that size. And if I give you a, a, an example that I show to customers and partners, here's just a simple example of how easy it is to use Snowpark. Um, at the top here, I've imported three different libraries that I've brought into the environment. Then I create a, a, a statement in Scala and then execute it by uh, running this inside of my notebook. What's happening behind the scenes now is Snowflake is converting that statement into a SQL statement, pushing it down, in this case, running a query over 61 million plus records, but only returning the final count back to Snowflake. And this is going to allow for those, those developers that choose to work in, in, like I said, languages such as Scala and Java to really now have a much easier environment to interact with this data and not actually having to do stuff in SQL and or be on the Snowflake platform directly. They're able to use these tools that they're comfortable with, that they're efficient in, and they're very productive in. The second announcement that was significant at our summit was the announcement of Java UDS. And with the announcement of Java UDS, we're able to deploy jar files directly into a Snowflake stage and build and compile user-defined functions over that jar file to be able to run models now that have been rendered inside of Snowflake. No longer the need to pull the data out to run through these models and then return back. These models can be run directly inside of Snowflake through these JAR deployments. And what Snowflake does behind the scenes is instantiate JVMs on our warehouses that are running. Um, as those of you who are familiar with, with Snowflake, warehouses come in a variety of sizes, all the way from extra to small up to soon 6XL. And each one of those represents the number of nodes used behind the scenes to process the, the data requests. And for every node that sits on a warehouse, we will instantiate a JVM to be able to run and, and, and execute these workloads through these jar files to get increased performance and, and to be able to be able to get more work done in a shorter amount of time with our per second pricing model that we have in the Snowflake platform. 
And here's an example of that, a simple example using a, a, a natural language jar file that's been deployed on top of Snowflake. What we're doing here is, is compiling that over a UDF and then able to use that function in a SQL statement. In this particular one, we're passing a string in there and the, the jar file is then looking at the content of the string to determine whether the information is a person, a place, or a location, or I'm sorry, an organization. And while this is a simple example, you can kind of think about the possibilities and now that can be done inside of Snowflake with the data never leaving Snowflake. All of this work is done inside of the platform using all of our security and governance uh, um, uh, processes that we have put in place and, and no longer the need for, for this data to leave Snowflake. Also opens up a lot of possibilities for business analysts and others inside the organization who previously couldn't or had a difficult time accessing this type of uh, logic. They're now able to incorporate it in their SQLs and their BI tools and their ETL tools to really take full advantage uh, of these, this work done outside of, of other parts of the organization and really allow the entire organization to benefit from its use. And, and combining these two together really becomes a powerful message and, and really functional data engineering and Snowflake, where now we're allowing developers to develop in their notebooks, to write code in the language of their choice, able to take jar files that have been generated and deployed out there and use them inside of the Snowflake platform. Snowflake then will then take those, those that, that data frame, that execution, that language written, convert it to SQL, it will understand if these Java UDFs are referenced in there and then only execute it and run it at the time's desire to actually run results, either bringing back subsets of data back to the notebook and or processing data such as, as creating or inserting data into tables inside of the Snowflake environment. Once again, not requiring that data to ever leave Snowflake unless the desired code is asking it to be pulled back and be painted back to a user screen. And, and where some of the benefit comes, not only in the functionality, but as I mentioned a little bit earlier, the speed, where now when you're combining Snowpark and processing billions of rows and combining that with UDS, where we're processing each record uh, individually, the ability to scale not only vertically, but horizontally inside of Snowflake and getting the same workload done at a comparable price point by using larger warehouses and, and really being able to execute and, and operate in an environment that's right for each organization. And not only for each organization, each team, and even each team member with inside of a, a, a given team because of the ability that Snowflake has to separate storage and compute and the compute resources not to have to, to contend with each other really gives uh, uh, these new features and functionalities a lot of ability to do things that developers struggled with or were not possible in the Snowflake environment previous to these features being released. Along with Snowpark and Java UDFs, we've also announced a number of other tools that will help developers as they uh, start to work more and more in the Snowflake environment. And one of them is unstructured data. We're currently in private preview right now for this and expect it to go in uh, public preview uh, shortly. But uh, now, not only the structured and semi-structured data like JSON in their raw formats, but now the ability to store pictures and voice and other unstructured um, data objects inside of the Snowflake environment. And with that comes the, the governance and the security and the ability to run SQL on top of these data sets not only to get metadata back about the unstructured objects, but now running external functions to run APIs against the data or using the Java UDS to get information out of there. So you can think of the power of potentially like pictures on a menu being captured and, and having some type of machine learning evaluate those pictures and return labels and information in a structured manner directly inside of Snowflake to combine with all of your other data assets and opening up unstructured data to a lot more users in your environment that previously, like I said, do not have the skill sets or had the access to that data and expand really what potentially they can do in their organizations, in their departments with this new ability inside of Snowflake. 
Another feature that is now in public preview that, that was announced last month was the ability for developers to start using APIs inside of Snowflake. And um, this is, is a new REST interface for submitting all SQL statements. And it's for those, those organizations that, for whatever reason, can't load drivers, or it's just a developer's preference. Uh, and, and they're looking to migrate other applications into Snowflake. This is gonna make it much easier, much simpler, and is really one that's gotten a lot of excitement from our customers that um, will now be able to start doing things via an API that they had been hoping to do for, for quite a bit inside Snowflake. And now it's becoming a reality with the announcement of this feature being publicly available. And the last feature for developers that I wanted to touch out that's gonna be coming soon is uh, stored procedures and Snowflake scripting. Up to this point, stored procedures were written in JavaScript. And for those organizations moving off of uh, traditional databases such as Oracle and SQL Server, um, we're gonna be announcing the ability to run stored procedures and this, this functional language inside of stored procedures using SQL. Um, it's in private preview right now. We're expecting it to become in public preview later in the year and is really going to uh, reduce time for migrations that involve these types of SQL stored procedures and help with our customers in moving more of their data and more of their workloads into the Snowflake platform. So if you think about it and, and really combining these new features with the data cloud story, with developers now having the ability to reduce the time for collection, not only within an organization, but from third parties and from partners, vendors, customers, and centralizing that using the Snowflake data shares and, and the data exchange. The ability to augment that data with our third party, as I mentioned, we have over 400 data sets across really all industries and is really growing at, at a tremendous rate. Um, one of the announcements we need is we're also looking to help organizations monetize through our data exchange as well, opening up more opportunities and more ways to get value out of your data. And all of this being uh, able to be used across structured, semi-structured, and unstructured data in their raw format immediately upon being brought into the Snowflake environment without any predefining the schemas and or any uh, engineering to take advantage of specifically uh, objects such as JSON or XML. And while I don't go into a deep the, uh, uh, areas and really um, talk about this in great detail, I, I don't want to miss out on the opportunity to talk about a lot of the new areas around governance and security that we have introduced to the platform, starting with knowing your data. We've made announcements about automatic data classification and object tagging with inside of Snowflake protecting your data, especially at that fine grain level with row access policies and data masking policies that are now either generally available or public preview. Um, the announcement that we're going to be doing conditional masking, so the ability to mask one column based off of the value of another column inside of Snowflake, and then expanding our rich set of metadata that is instantly available either through views or through our functions, now including the ability to not only see what tables users are accessing, but also the fields those users are accessing to get even more insight to how your data is being used and if it's being used appropriately. And we have a site specifically for developers that was launched last year. So if you're not aware of it, I encourage you to go out and take a look. But it's developers.snowflake.com and has a lot of information and resources specifically for the developer community. So um, I'd encourage all of you, if you had time, really get more information, a lot of different use cases, stories, technical material to help developers as they start looking to build uh, data intensive applications on the Snowflake platform. And we don't do this alone. We have a very large uh, partner technology ecosystem, and I have just a few of them up here across a lot of different areas. And these are partners that could be several years old. Some of them are new um, within the last year or two, but all of them have certified Snowflake connectors, which means it's gone through an independent uh, verification and, and that they're following best practices with inside of Snowflake. So um, whether, whether an organization is looking to do this through custom type applications or code, or really want to utilize technology partners that they're very happy with and, and comfortable and getting value out of, Snowflake wants to be an open environment, allowing our customers to interact with the platform in the way that they choose to be most appropriate and efficient and productive for them. And, and with the announcement of Snowpark, and Java UDFs, we have a new site also out there called Snowpark Accelerated. And we have a number of our technology partners that have put 
white papers and blogs and videos and how they're incorporating these new features into their products and how they've already gone about helping our mutual customers benefit from these new features and really gain even more value from the Snowflake platform itself as we look to, to look to expand what the Snowflake environment can do and what our customers are asking for the platform to be able to do as we move forward.